which has got far too many slides, so I'm going to skip through a few of them. Um, uh, hard to follow on from those two projects we just heard about doing amazing things in their communities. But I think we're, we've all got different, uh, different opportunities which have a lot of crossover. And in Dunbar, we've, um, we've been responding, I think, to, uh, to the needs and the opportunities that are very particular to our locality as well as having crossover. Uh, with uh, what's happening elsewhere. So <clears throat> we didn't start out as having anything to do with heritage, really. Uh, we started out with a vision that uh, has expanded, and this vision here uh, captures some of our original vision at the Ridge, but also some of what we expanded to be about. And it was about providing training and support for local people to, become, uh, to overcome barriers to realising their potential, moving them away from dependency towards contribution, and that can be dependency for a lot of folk on substances, uh, also dependency on benefits. Uh, we're quite geographically isolated and all the helps and supports for people in addressing those barriers tend to be at the other end of the county. And if you've got a car or money to use a train, uh, then that's not a big problem. But for a lot of folk locally, it is a problem. And so we were about trying to help people overcome those barriers. We want to, to enhance the pool of local skills and knowledge. And here's the bit that grew out of that. Uh, to preserve the historic fabric of Dunbar and to contribute to the economic resilience of our community. And these two photographs show uh, where we've ended up um, in, the, in a historic backland rig just behind the high street. Uh, Dunbar is a traditional Scottish borough townscape with the, uh, the sort of fish backbone and, and uh, the rigs running off behind and this garden was sitting derelict for many many years belongs to the council and the council gave it to us and we ended up by default becoming the custodians of a really important piece of history that we had to sort out for our own purposes and that's actually transformed um, a lot of what we do and given the whole new purpose uh, to what we're about so <coughs> we are reactive <coughs> and, and what we do is uh, created very often in response to local need, but we're also very proactive um, <clears throat> in the sense that we're always looking for new ways to meet the needs uh, of people locally. And our setting in that garden and in then later in the adjacent Black Bull Close uh, have, have allowed us to bring together local need um, in, uh, and, and opportunity in a really exciting way. So this is uh, a little road map of how we try and help people move from dependency to contribution. We get referrals from a whole load of different uh, sources. So a lot, often we'll get referrals from GPs with whom we work very closely. We work with uh, Skills Development Scotland, with addiction support agencies, with local schools, with social work, um, across a whole load of departments in the local council, with the police. We get now, because we've become very well known, we get a lot of self-referrals. So if people um, are facing difficulties in their lives, they tend to come to us as a first point of call, port of call. Um, they get support, not just by telephone, uh, very rarely by telephone, although people do tend to text and message uh, out of hours over weekends and so on, and that's uh, quite challenging. We are able to provide volunteering opportunities. We've got a cafe. Um, we've got the garden and we've now got the Black Bull Close as well uh, and people can come and uh, spend time working in the garden or on the walls particularly uh, in a volunteer capacity. That can also mean that people then available to access the sport, we can give them around employability, working on their skills around CVs and job searching um, and, and so on. Also using us as a signposting point for signposting them to other agencies who can help them address their issues. Uh, and ideally, we get people moving on into either further training or into employment, and then they take off like a rocket. Um, so we were a community where everybody uh, can achieve their full potential. And some of that uh, involves helping people to achieve their potential entirely out with the ridge. And we move people on into other jobs and into other sectors that have nothing to do with uh, the core of what we, we, we can provide internally. But here you can see some pictures of, of folk who have accessed some of our supports. Up at the top there, that's some of our um, volunteers and also our trainees uh, who got um, involved with Scotland's Urban Past as part of our project to uncover the history of the Blackball Close. And there they are proudly displaying their certificate. Um, and then one of them, you can see, is one of our trainee masons, very proudly standing next to a new piece of wall where he's been um, 
involved in cutting that stone to, to bring that back to life. And there's a group of youngsters from the school who are struggling with their mainstream school engagement, um, usually behavioural issues, making it a bit difficult. School's not always the right place for everyone, as Lorna was saying. Um, and these youngsters come actually initially for a, a placement in the garden, but a lot of them move into stone masonry there. They're sitting on the wall, a, stone, a dry stone wall that they made that's in front of the wall that's been repaired by our masonry team. And I'll show you photographs um, further on of, the, of that garden. But that's been a transformation of a site and a transformation in the lives of the folk involved in doing it as well. Further over, I think it's that, that's, this is a parallel project where we um, have a lot of food-related projects around life skills, trying to give people skills in budgeting, nutrition and cooking, and also providing free food for people, a lot of whom are really struggling on the um, universal credit and changes to benefits at the moment. Um, down here, <laughs> this was an amazing uh, sponsored walk that volunteers just decided they wanted to do because they were so excited about the sanctuary garden that we were creating. They wanted to give something back. So they organised, completely independently of us, a sponsored walk. And um, they walked, I think, maybe five miles and <laughs> raised over £800 for a water feature. So we're at the moment trying to um, restrain them a bit on the planning, the design of the water feature. With, uh, the stone masons are quite excited and envisaging, I think, Trevi fountains. And we get quite a lot for £800. But, um, yeah, there's going to be an exciting water feature coming out of that. And there again, um, garden volunteers um, and the trainees from the masonry side of things restoring the, the, the medieval wall. So, I'm not going to dwell on this, but this is basically just to give you an idea of some of what the Ridge tries to achieve. Uh, we provide training and support around employability. We provide practical supports for more vulnerable members of the community to try and help them to, to fulfill their potential. We've developed this uh, strand of what we do around protecting our local built heritage. Um, and David was talking at the beginning about developing skills and knowledge to be able to do that. There's a real dearth of skills in, uh, locally in Dunbar around traditional stone masonry and traditional joinery. And we've got a beautiful conservation area that's fallen into major disrepair. Um, and there just aren't the skills locally to deal with that. And so you look around and you see the repairs that have been made that are often really inappropriate and causing problems. So we're about trying to move people's individuals' lives forward by giving them an opportunity where they wouldn't have had an opportunity to acquire skills and to get into paid employment with us. Um, but also that's providing ongoingly for the community a pool of, of, of skilled people to be able to take care of our, our um, conservation area. We're also developing business uses for some structures. The Blackboard Close is really exciting. If anybody's interested, we've got the boards from our community consultation where we looked at options um, for, for reuse of the, the Blackboard Close, which you'll see pictures of in a minute. Um, and part of that is about creating business opportunities uh, to make money, to be able to sustain uh, what we do, but also to allow other people to come and, and um, develop their own businesses. Um, that will give life and uh, longevity to, to the use of the, uh, the old buildings there. Um, so we, th that will have an impact on the wider economy. And we're, we're acting as, a, if you like, as a sort of seed um, in the local community in terms of optimism. It's really interesting to see how much despair there was locally about the, the state of the, the um, built environment, the historic built environment. And people never thought that the Blackball Close would ever be anything other than a ruin. Um, and they feel, felt the same about a lot of other buildings that actually people really value and are really important to local um, history. And, and there's a lot of desperation to see some of those buildings uh, regenerated and brought back into use. And seeing what's happening with the Blackball Close, uh, there's now an energy and a belief that things can actually change and that it's not just going to be people sitting around bemoaning the fact that, oh, wouldn't it be lovely if, but it never will be. It's actually happening in Blackboard Close, so it can happen elsewhere. And look, here are the people with the skills to do it. And that is all bringing life back into the high street. It's a palpable thing that you can feel the, the improvement in um, civic pride and in optimism locally. So 
This is where we started when we first moved into the Backland Rig. Um, it was offered to us by the council. We'd, we'd previously been in um, our local community hospital garden where we'd created a beautiful garden, but it was just too far out, and there were different reasons why it wasn't suitable. We needed somewhere much closer into the town centre, and we were offered this. We looked at different options, and this was not a favoured option. You can see why. Um, the walls were broken down. It was this high in, um, in, in weeds and trees and uh, it, you know, things like brambles and holly and stuff, and ivy, that was going to be a nightmare to get rid of. We didn't have the money to sort the walls out. There wasn't actually an entrance into it because these rigs with the parallel walls, you couldn't get into it. You certainly couldn't come through the Blackpool Close off the high street, which was a ruin. So huge challenges, but we didn't have any alternative. So this was the opportunity. Uh, quite scary. That's what it looks like now, three years later. Um, the wall you can see on the far side there was like this, down here. And we broke through it with planning permission and listed building consent and um, made an entrance through onto the garden lane, which passes uh, through on the other side of the next rig across. We have the rig behind there as well, and in fact the one on the other side of the path, which has become the sanctuary garden. So we broke through that wall, but still we needed to do something about making it safe and making it lovely. Uh, we wanted to create a really high quality garden where people felt that they were um, involved in something really valuable and really um, prestigious. And so, you know, and we have actually found that's been a really important part of what we do, that if we create something beautiful and of high quality, the folk involved in it get a huge thrill from that and a huge boost to their sense of self-esteem and mental health is a massive issue for almost everybody that we work with. So, uh, I spoke to somebody, I think, in grants at Historic Environment Scotland and said, oh, can you help us? We've got an old wall. And they said, no, not really. Um, so uh, we went away and sort of scratched our heads a bit. And somebody kept mentioning a name of somebody who was in technical, the technical side, Roger Curtis. Um, and eventually I managed to track Roger down and said, would you be interested in helping with this? And he said, no, not really. <laughs> and, uh, and then he went away and thought about it and came back and said, oh, no, actually, I do need a site to demonstrate uh, hot, hot lime mortar techniques. I said, what? Because um, I didn't really know anything about hot lime mortar at that point. I know quite a lot now. Uh, and so Roger gave us a small amount of money to do a demonstration on a small section of that wall. We got volunteers who, at that stage, we had no walling uh, work going on at all at the ridge. We had volunteers in the garden who were busy clearing the side. We got the volunteers to come and help out as part of that. That was a deal with Roger that if, if we allowed him very generously to uh, give us the money to do his technical um, demonstration, that he would allow us to put in some of our volunteers to use it as a training opportunity. And the change in their lives was absolutely extraordinary. We get people to evaluate themselves over a whole range of physical and mental health issues. And the charts for the folk involved just went like that. And it was absolutely beautiful. They're, these are guys who are known ne'er-do-wells in the town, who have got criminal records, who are troublemakers, uh, you know, falling into police vans at, at the weekend and bashing other folk. And, you know, it, people who are used to being um, despised because of how they've behaved, then getting folk coming and looking at this wall. So people from the community council, visiting folk from, um, you know, Lyme boffins from Northern Ireland and Wales and England, coming and looking at their work, members of the local community who would normally shake their heads and walk away from them, stopping and saying, this is amazing, you're doing this? This is really skillful, and gosh, look what you're doing for Dunbar. And as I say, their charts of how they felt about themselves and, and therefore how they treated themselves it was extraordinary. And we realized after Roger actually very kindly gave us a few repeat wads of funding for moving a little bit further along the wall, that we were onto something in terms of this as a vehicle for changing people's lives. And so we set up a parallel community interest company called the Ridge Foundations. Um, and the Ridge Foundations is all about bringing people in as volunteers to have a go, uh, learn some skills and maybe carry on to do something else uh, or to then come to do paid work experience and then potentially into employment, paid employment as a trainee um, on the Ridge Foundations project. And that has enabled us to, with a, a whole load of different ways of funding that, including funds that are nothing to do with heritage funding that are around in employer recruitment incentives and so on. Um, that's enabled us to continue to complete that wall and to move into other bits of boundary wall around on, which you can't see there and also to move into the Blackpool Close. 
long time, one slide. Because we love a challenge, we ended up here too. This is the Blackpool Close, and I don't. You can maybe get a sense of the oppressive um, overhang of, of vegetation. These very close, very small, um, narrow walls of the close itself, then leading into these buildings which were just stuffed with rubble. So with the collapsed uh, ceilings and the collapsed roofs, and then on top of that. Decades and decades of people just chucking rubbish in. And then trees had rooted in, ivy had grown over the walls. The whole thing was just terrifying. And this was, we were offered by the council, since you've done that lovely job on the garden, how about you do the same thing here? We know nothing about how to go about doing this, but yes, okay, why not? So now that's what that photo, before this looks like this, it's been cleared. We've been incredibly, uh, incredibly fortunate in getting a lot of funding support, um, and it's enabled us to clear and also to carry out a parallel community engagement project, which has involved a lot of community archaeology and a lot of events which have really drawn the community in. Who, but this was behind gates and very invisible and has been shut off for decades and decades, but it's, it's been an absolutely extraordinary thing for the community to be able to come in and discover um, what lies just off their high street, and to discover that bit of their history, which, which has that joining up of the, the close buildings where people lived and worked with the rigged land behind, because there is nowhere else in Dunbar that you can actually experience that. Um, so if anybody wants to talk in detail about what we actually got up to in our community engagement, Margaret's here, and she is the one that ran the... Um, the community engagement for us over the summer. So this is what is this is going to become, hopefully. We've done a feasibility study, which has looked at options appraisals. It's consulted with the community, consulted with our own internal um, staff and volunteers and service users about what we need from these buildings, because we don't have an office. We don't have a crisis drop-in center, which we increasingly massively need. We don't have a training kitchen, although we offer a lot of kitchen-based training, which we dot about the community at the moment, borrowing kitchens, which isn't always convenient. And it also offers opportunities for us to develop more business uses and for us to rent rooms out to the community for events, for meetings, for gallery displays, for band practice, whatever it may be. Um, so meeting the needs of the wider community, but also meeting the, the needs of the community we're already serving in a much more effective way. And the whole journey to arrive at this is going to enable us to deliver more and more training opportunities for people in traditional skills. Behind these two modern bits sticking out this way is the original Blackpool Close set of buildings, all of which are being restored using traditional skills. So the journey has been a bit of a revelation, so it has. Um, that was after we cleared the vegetation, at some of the guys um, mending the broken walls. So this is really just to recap on what I was saying about the, um, the revelation of, of, of the impact that that journey of, of training could have upon the, the lives of the individuals involved. So it is the magic mix. And I'm, I'm, it's not, we're not uh, saying this for the first time. I'm sure that other people have, have recognised this as well. And if you've got involved in training, you've seen, I think, the, with the Port Soy project, the, the transformation in youngsters' lives um, around being involved in something constructive and positive like that. But really, this has been, been for us such a special thing. Um, and this is the company that we've made out of it. And the concept is that over time we will, we will yes, we will get funding and we're in the throes of working with East Lothian Council to apply for a car scheme, um, which will allow us to work with them to um, restore buildings in the high street, mostly tenements, but also um, one particular very iconic building in the high street. Um, and that, that will enable a lot more training to happen and a lot more building of a local skills, skilled workforce. Um, but that over time, beyond that, that we will then have a business that can attract commercial contracts because we have the skill and will be the go-to organization, the go-to business that people will come to for, um, for doing that sort of work. It's p turned out to be a bit the envy of other towns across East Lothian and actually more widely across Scotland. We've had visits from 
uh, all over for, of organizations and community groups wanting to come and see uh, this model and to replicate it locally. And that for us is massively exciting. We, we, we think it's a great template and we're really, really keen to share it. Um, the um, Centre for Social Justice, which is a think tank down in Westminster, also seemed to think it was a, um, a highly um, viable model and that it was a very good idea. Uh, we were the runners-up, got second prize in the, uh, their awards for social enterprise, which looked at, um, looked at uh, scalability and replicatability, if there's such a word, um, of a social enterprise that was tackling poverty in particular was their focus. And we took a team down to London. It was so exciting. They, that some of these guys are our stonemasons. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about Darren. That's his dad, Mark, over on the other side, both of whom are part of our masonry team. Huge challenge and challenges in their background, huge transformation in their lives got Colin who's part of the um, more part of the food side of things and members of staff and um, trainees directors and so on uh, and we got um, local businesses and Virgin Trains to sponsor us going down there so that was fantastic um, here we go. so that's just a few more pictures showing you this is the set the um, sanctuary garden we called it and and that was there were 18 skips of rubbish came barrowed out of that by hand onto the high street down the narrow close that was buried in probably about 10 foot of rubble um, and we called it the sanctuary garden it was a collaborative project between the school children who come one day a week and a dementia friendly group locally who designed the garden and, and grew the plants and planted it uh, and the foundations team sorted out the walls. We didn't realise because the sanctuary was really referring to the idea that just off a very busy, well, fairly busy high street, which can be quite stressful, especially if you've got dementia, and that this would be somewhere where people could come and take a breath and enjoy the garden. Um, but we didn't realise what we were going to find in there, in the rubble, were bits of the old friary, because there's a medieval friary of which there are only two remaining minor pieces, um, but we found very definite pieces of the tracery and pillars and so on buried in amongst the rubble there, so even more of a reason that it was uh, apt to have called it the Sanctuary Garden. So the Blackpool Close, we've cleared, um, and we've run the community archaeology, and we're planning the future. I'm skipping through this because I'm aware I'm running out of time. Um, and... We've really looked at it as being, you know, you could look at it from two sides. Uh, you saw that picture at the beginning. That was what we saw and had a panic and said, no, there's no way we were interested in being involved in that. Uh, it's way beyond our area of comfort and knowledge and expertise. Why would we? Um, but actually, we needed those buildings because we needed those facilities. We have no other means of getting hold of um, those facilities, and that will enable us to deliver better for our clients, our service users. The wider community needed all those facilities I described to you that we we're going to be able to make available to them. So it was an opportunity to create that for the wider community and we're really embedded in the community and very important to Dunbar. Um, and our heritage needed it. The buildings needed saving. They were on the at-risk register. They were, as you could see, very close to going beyond the point of being rescuable. Uh, so it was a great opportunity to bring all that focus together to rescue something that's really important and also to make it available and share it. East Lothian Council owns the whole site as part of a slightly ill-conceived previous scheme to redevelop the backlands, which thankfully didn't come good. Um, and it was a liability for them. They were delighted that we'd taken it off their hands and made it into something for the benefit of the community. Um, they didn't know what to do with it. It's landlocked. There's a huge 20-foot drop at the back of it. Um, there's no way it can really ever be developed. And we're in the throes of doing community asset transfer with them for both the garden and the, and the buildings. So it solves a problem for them in terms of that liability, but also they're very supportive of the work we're doing across the social agenda and in terms of creating employment and bringing people into employment who otherwise were frankly considered to be unemployable. Um, so now we're working with HES to consolidate one of the buildings known as Building 4, uh, which is really exciting, uh, which affords opportunities and training for our wonderful team of foundations trainees. 
And that's made up of in individuals, as I said, with a whole range of complex issues. Two of our foundations team have already, in the space of a year since we set up last October, have already progressed into becoming modern apprentices, which is hugely exciting for us. We battled and battled to get CITB registration, got it, and snuck them in the second week of the course. And they are so beyond thrilled to have um, achieved that. Um, so we did, I'm not going to make you read all of this slide, but we did a cost-benefit analysis because we, we're very much about working with the individuals to transform their lives as well as all the other fantastic stuff that's, um, that's getting done as part of this. And Darren, nobody reminds him, he doesn't mind you knowing his name. He and both he and his dad, Mark, are really happy for people to hear their story. And, and Darren, who was a bit like Lorna said about one of her youngsters who was you know, very head down, wouldn't look at anybody or talk to anybody. Darren was like that. He came as part of the garden team um, of, as they called themselves, the Naughty Boys. And he wouldn't speak to anybody. He wouldn't make eye contact with anybody. We now can't hold him back. If he was here, he'd be sort of bustling up to try and get in in front of me to tell you all about how amazing it is and what he's done. And he's um, super proud of himself, as very much he should be. Um, so really just to say, we, you know, if you look at these figures in terms of the impact it's having on people's lives, this is an incredible opportunity to save money for the taxpayer whilst having this amazing benefit for people individually. And there you go. Yes. So I'm not going to be able to do Mark's story, am I? No. Okay. So there's Darren with his stone that he carved the day he found out he hadn't got onto another apprenticeship course, but just before we found out, we were able to send him on one, and that was his therapy beautiful job and that was him meeting one of the um, government ministers um, and I wanted to tell you the story of Mark tell you the story about his life but I'm not going to be allowed to because I've run out of time so there's his dad who came out of jail and is now a poster boy for second chances which is a criminal justice sorry community justice Scotland initiative about um, people who've been in jail getting a second chance to, to turn their lives around. Um, and he talks about the impact that being involved with the Ridge has had on his life. And you can see him. He's just had a high plaudit from uh, Roger Curtis, who came to see the work he's been doing there in the Blackwell Close, who said, what a fantastic standard of work Mark was producing. Amazing. And that was just, we'll just finish there with that. That was a statement from... Um, Jimmy Wilson, who's our local community warden, who knows all these folk that we work with from years and years of working in the community. And he talks about the amazing impact that this skills training opportunity is having on people's lives individually, and then seeing the ripple effect of that out across the community, both in terms of the individual people and, um, and also in terms of the, uh, the wider community. So obviously, I'm not going to tell you in detail about the funders, because I'm, I'm finishing up now. And there's some photos of our beautiful um, summer engagement. Um, that was a long table feast. That was meeting with the minister. That was a calligraphy workshop. That was one of our finds. Um, and thank you. <laughs>